hear these words from Psalm 81. The psalmist writes, sing aloud to God our strength, shout for joy to the God of the saints, of those saints who have gone before us. Raise a song, sound the tambourine, the sweet lyre of the harp, blow the trumpet and praise to our maker. Now here are some announcements for our lives together. Today kicks off the first session of the Evergreen Rose Institute. And our uh, special guest speaker today is our very own Reverend Beatrice Wild. <laughs> and uh, so and you'll have to come back next week to hear our next guest speaker, Ustad Ashir Kirk. Um, connect cards are on the back table and a link to a digital one will be dropped on the chat for those joining us on Zoom. A special and very big thanks to everybody who helped make our presence at Pride a wonderful and fun, successful event yesterday. Um, thanks for all of your hard work and just for being your awesome selves. And I don't know if she can hear it, but thank you, Betty, for doing your awesome dance. Um, we celebrate Catherine, who's not here today, um, as our music director, and because she is out of town, tra uh, traveling out of town um, to celebrate her parents' 50 years of marriage. So we pray for their safe uh, travels there and back. Um, and we welcome back our previous music director, Jim. Yeah. We are thrilled to have him in worship today. Um, session, we'll have a meeting directly after worship here in the space. Um, if you haven't already, please fill out the MICA self-interest form and leave it in the basket. Uh, there are some right there on that table and on the back counter. If you have any ideas for beneficiaries for the Together We Can Benefit concert, please send suggestions um, to Mr. Corey. Their pride beer and hymns will be on Friday, June 14th at 6.30 at Hefline Brewing. Um, please bring your own snacks, either to share or not to share. Um, and <laughs> bring your own non-alcoholic beverages. There will be $5 beer specials. Um, and Catherine has said bring some enthusiasm as well. Um, and also, if you would like to be part of the Summer Pop-Up Choir, um, reach out to Catherine so that she can get you the information for that. And now I invite Patrick up for an announcement. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I'm Patrick, if I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet. and. Uh, I had this great idea last weekend that we would sign cards for folks that live far away or for some of our saints nearby who can't make it to be here and worship with us. And then I forgot 
among my infinite wisdom that it was Memorial Day weekend and it would get very few signatures on the cards. So, we're going to do this again, uh, in case you didn't get a chance, if you weren't here last week. Um, there are some bigger cards, like this. Uh, these are going to folks who, uh, locally, um, we've got uh, Bill Graves, who is our oldest member of the congregation. He's 100 years old. 101. 101 years old. Um, we've got Joe Stone. We've got um, Jan Jameson, Joy Summit. Uh, even if you don't know these folks, that's kind of the beauty of the church, right? That's what I said last week. You can still sign it. You can still say that you're you're thinking of them. You're praying, holding them in prayer because they're still part of our community. And then the postcards here are for folks. They're going to go in a bigger care package. Um, and you can even write on this side. We've got some Sharpies. They'll hold up on this side, too. Um, and these are going to go in like bigger care packages with candy and little colorful googly eyes and stickers. Uh, we've got uh, Sigma, who recently moved out to Seattle. We've got Liv um, and Kate, uh, Abby Judd, the Warners. Uh, so please take a moment uh, to sign these. And whenever the basket gets, I'm going to start with you, Amory. Roger, you are in charge of making sure the basket gets to that side. Oh, God. <laughs> Got it? All right. Uh, Renee, you're in charge of making sure the basket gets back on the stool. Roger, Renee? Okay. Now, please rise and find your spirit as you bring in the light. Oh, holy love who will never abandon us. And just as you are the God who is three persons, we are also called to be in community. We are one, the toe tapping, hymn singing, love making, hand clapping, joy sharing, open and affirming body of Christ. One community, all together for one another. May we continue to grow in your love and light. Good morning, my name is Jim Cornfoot, and I got two quick words for you on our hymn selections. Number one, y'all are smart in the red directions. Your lyrics will be printed either on the back of the bulletin or in the blue insert at the bottom of the right hand, so just look for those. All three of our hymns today come from a collection called Songs for the Holy Other. Uh, these are hymns and songs where either the lyrics and music have been composed by queer folks, um, or their allies. All three of the hymns that I picked today are composed and written by queer musicians uh, because it is Pride Month and we absolutely have leadership here in this church and, and I wanted to spotlight for today. Uh, two of the three hymns have tunes that you know. This first one may not, so I'll play it all the way through. Please join us in singing Queerly Beloved. <laughs>
Friends, hear this truth louder at this time. We are God's beloved and we are created to live peacefully in community, in friendship with one another. There's nothing we can do and nowhere we can go to be separated from the love of God. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Trust the peace of Christ to one another. Would you kick out this joyous pride month? Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. If you, you good? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, y'all. We're going to play Evergreen Bingo. Does everyone have pieces? Okay, okay, okay. Mr. Matthew, Miss Betty, you guys want to go help mom and dad on bingo? Help them get the right answers. All right, y'all. Okay, so today we're going to play something called Evergreen Bingo. Okay. All right. So you may have two free spaces on there. All right. The reason that is, is because one space says free. The other space says Jesus. Okay. All right. So if you have Jesus and free, you have two free spaces. All right. 
So go ahead and put your pieces on there. All right, number one. Our house DJ's name is DJ Cosmo. You sure it's not DJ Patty Pat? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, may not be the house DJ, but the pastor of Evergreen is. DJ Yeah, okay. you can, hey, I'll take that. I'll take that. If you know, you know. Um, Jesus told Noah to get two of these, and it's also Mr. Corey's favorite NBA team. The Grizzlies. Okay. This one isn't Mr. Corey's favorite NBA team, but it is Miss Linda's favorite college basketball team. Tigers. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the name of our children's ministry? Does anybody know? The Oral mm -hmm. I hear somebody saying it. What parade did you guys go to this past weekend? Pride. Pride. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Matthew. What's the name of this church? Oh, no, okay. I need more pieces. Oh, oh I know the answer to that one. That's great. <laughs> What's the name oh, of this Rick. church? Do I have a bingo? Rick. Let's see. Wait a minute. Everybody keep their pieces. Keep their pieces. Let's see if he actually knows what he's talking about. Wait a minute. No, no, I did not. Oh, oh yeah. shoulda, coulda, woulda. He thought he had. All right. What's the name of our What's the name of our annual benefit concert that we have every year? It's our fourth time together. Oh, bingo! Let's see what you have. Okay, we got Pride, Jesus, Together We Can, and Kids Orbit. What's your name? Koki. Y'all snap it up for Koki. All right, Kobe, listen, while DJ Patty Pat is talking, you're going to have a snack. <laughs> so you can choose whichever one that you want. All right. All right, y'all keep them on there. Keep them on there. All right. I got a bingo here, too. You got a bingo? Let's see. Let's see. I believe you might have cheated. Let's see. You got the corners. What does that say? Together we can. Jesus free and Grizzlies. All right. You get a snack, too. Okay. Corners, corners count. Corners count. What? Wait, how? <laughs> well. Did you fill up all the corners? Oh, you mean that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Everybody, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. It's just a game. Okay? All right. Y'all are. All right. This person, this person, was told to build an ark, but it's also Catherine's grandchild name. <laughs> and he was also cute in my show too. Oh my god, he's so adorable. All right, what's it's the number one rule of all things? You're supposed to do this every day, all day, no matter what. Uh, oh, bingo. 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 bingo, bingo, two ways. All right, let's I see. Got Pastor Patrick. Mm -hmm. I got love. Mm -hmm. Good job, Latifa. And what you got, Chad? I got Grizzlies, Tigers, Love, Pride. Yes. That's All right, y'all. Exactly y'all <laughs> snap it up for y'all. Snap it up, snap it up. Thank you all so much. Miss Paulina and uh, Matthew, can you guys help us pick up the pieces? Everybody pass your boards to the right. And then we're going to get your pieces. Thank you all so much for playing Evergreen Bingo.
Friends, my name is Beatrix. I am your parish associate pastor, um, but today I'm coming to you in my role as chaplain of Rhodes College as our first Evergreen Rhodes Institute speaker. I am also chaplain of the year, so uh, here we go. I'm uh, hoping that the Holy Spirit is going to work on the projector to make sure this is going strong um, by the time I finish my prayer and the holy reading and then another prayer. So please pray with me. God, you are good and you hover over our chaos. Um, I pray for the reading of this, um, our scripture for this morning, that we would come to know you in new and exciting and wonderful ways. Amen. Our first scripture comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 139, verses 1 through 6 and 13 through 18. Hear now the word of God. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind me and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. That I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And please pray with me. Um, before I deliver our message this morning. Dear God, please help the projector to work. <laughs> and I pray for the words of this mouth and the meditation of all these hearts, that they would be wholly pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. These light switches turn it off. I actually do have an issue with this. Um, she turned it off. Oh. All right. Who's gonna help me figure out the problem? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's light switch. Oh, I wonder if it's light switch too. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I think the projector is asleep. Yeah. I'm gonna try turning off. No. Oh. Something anyway. Okay, that's working. Yeah. Go, to the, go to the next slide. No, I'm. Oh, you did? Yeah, I'm on other yeah, slides. The slides are the show slides here. Slides is here. So it's not the indicating this. Because you're around. Yeah. Yeah, definitely turns on. Okay. Yeah. I was still searching. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're all HDMI searching. HDMI one. HDMI one or two? Does anybody know? Hey! hey. Oh, that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yay, Adam. Yeah. You took me to MVP. That was on purpose for community, right? The theme of community. Uh, community. Our purpose. theme for this Evergreen Roads Institute is community. And I will be talking specifically about belonging. And it's good news. 
So philosopher Miley Cyrus asks in Party in the USA, am I going to fit in? Which is a big question when it comes to college life. Good question, Miley. Um, so I put some references on the board mostly to show you that um, belonging is like it's a touchy-feely idea, but it is a touchy-feely idea that we can measure. And if we can measure it, we can research it, which means we can fund it. And it's actually very popular to fund um, and study belonging right now because it seems to be protective. When, you, um, when a person feels like they belong, they have better health outcomes and also um, better like academic success. Uh, when you feel like you belong, at least at colleges. Um, yeah, so related to um, positive out outcomes, and basically belonging is like when you feel like you fit in, um, thinking that other people want you there and thinking that it's right for you to be here. I think in our guts, you know what I'm talking about when I say you can think of a time when you felt like you belong. Um, so that is a lot of what I do at Rhodes College is that I um, help students grow into a sense of belonging. You don't just come on campus and belong. You have to find people who make you laugh and who get your humor and who challenge you. And eventually you find the place where you belong. Um, isolation and loneliness are also hot topics. Our Surgeon General actually issued this, um, calling it an epidemic, which is a big deal for a Surgeon General to call something an epidemic. Um, and. I mean, Surgeon General is concerned about it. I am also concerned about it as a higher education professional. I'm concerned about isolation and loneliness, both on our campuses um, and in our communities. But my special, you know, my role is that I'm concerned with it on communities. But I think we're concerned about it at this church, too. Um, at Rhodes College, I will say this about my data. Um, students fill out the form where they check the box about their religion with, like, their families hovering over them. So I know that my data is faulty. I understand that. Um, but it does give us a baseline. We, I have a fairly Christian population. Um, I would say it is 57% Christian. Um, the largest subset of that are Baptist students. The second largest are Catholic students. So even within the Christianity um, group, there's some diversity there. And then we have about 9% are religious but non-Christian. And then 34% are we don't know, they didn't fill out the form, or they're agnostic. I included that because I think that that's different from being religious but not Christian. Um, and of the 9% who are religious but not Christian, it's a small amount Jewish, a small amount Muslim, a slightly smaller amount Hindu, and a smaller amount Buddhist. Um, so we've got, we've got some religious diversity at the school. Um, I arrived in 2018, and since that time, um, I have helped them start it, but really the students helped do these things themselves. They started an Episcopal group, they started a Methodist group, um, the students started a group that's just for Black Christian fellowship opportunities, and um, yeah, so we've really grown. My, my Christian students are doing really well. They feel pretty well supported. I have about 20 people of what I call my religious community partners, and they come on campus, like, um, uh, they come on campus and do work with students, kind of in a religious sense. And I, I think if I have 20, 19 are Christian and one is Jewish. Um, and today we have nine religious groups, seven of them are Christians. Um, but I still really, it's important to me to support that 9% who are religious and not Christian and that bigger percentage who are coming on campus but who are not Christian or not um, religious at all. And uh, the question is, how do I support those students? Well, actually, we're going to start with my why. Um, and I actually read the lectionary wrong, so I thought that today's lectionary text was the Magnificat. Actually, the something we get from, something we draw from to bring out the Hail Mary and the Magnificat. So I'm going to read it for you now. Um, and I that screen is too small for me, so I'm going to turn a little bit to read it off of here. So this is from Luke. Uh, which is a gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, chapter 1, verses 39 through 57, so before Jesus was even born. Hear now the word of God. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. 
When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. My uh, former Catholics in the room will recognize that from Hail Mary. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, and this is called the Magnificat. My musicians will probably recognize these words. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked with favor upon the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown great strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth and she bore a son. So um, that's my why. I'll go back. I do interfaith ministry because I am a Christian. Because what I read in this text and other parts of the Bible is that it says that God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. So what I try to do with my work is take whoever is at the margins and I want to center them. So I want to put at the center whoever has been pushed aside or swept asunder. Um, and for me in my field, that's my 9% of students who are religious, but who are just trying to make it at this, um, at this PWI, this predominantly white institution, at this Christian affiliated institution, um, because I think that they deserve to feel like they belong at Rhodes College. And my Christian ministry, it is interfaith work, um, but I do it as a Christian, and I do it from this um, grounding in the Bible. Um, yeah, and I know everyone secretly thinks I worship Mary. I don't. I just think she had a lot of really good things to say. <laughs> so the big question that I work with is how do you build belonging among religious minority students at Rhodes College when Rhodes College was not built for religious minority students? And I mean that literally. Like I say to the students, like I acknowledge these bricks were not laid for my Jewish students, my Muslim students, my Hindu students, my Buddhist students, my Wiccan students. The bricks were literally laid for Christians. So here's an example of that. This is the um, one of the prayer rooms on campus. It's found in a residence hall. Um, and I don't think anyone notices or like, I don't think anyone knows or cares about this besides me, but now I get to tell you. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at this column. I included some helpful um, circles and then I uh, blew it up. We got the sign of the cross literally in the columns. So when I say that the bricks were not built with my current student body in mind, that is, um, we've got a lot of students who do not believe, or we have students who believe a tradition other than Christianity. These bricks were laid with the Christian student body in mind because that was, um, that was its original intent of the school was to educate um, Christians, specifically Presbyterians. And now, um, you know, our biggest Christian group isn't even Presbyterians. Um, so, so they, the students don't care about this. Like, I don't think the students see this and are like, oh no, I don't belong. Uh, but when I say that the school was not built with them in mind, this is literally what I mean. The bricks were not laid with their, um, with their experience in mind. Um, so how do I do it? A lot of, um, a lot of listening. So I uh, just recently completed level two clinical pastoral education. Um, which is a training program for chaplains. And at the start of this program, I would have said this program is going to teach me how to listen to my care seeker students and journey with them. So I don't know why I'm doing this program because what I want to learn is how to best advocate for my students. And then as it turns out, at the end of the program, I realized that the program taught me how to listen to my care seeker students and journey with them, 
which is, in fact, the best way to advocate for my students. So it's been a lot of listening um, to students. So they say, we can't, you know, we're having trouble eating at the dining hall. Okay, well, tell me what you're eating. Tell me what's going on. And then it's realizing that the dining hall, for some reason, always pairs pork with catfish. So like, not, not together, not the same meal. I know, you're horrified. Not the same meal. I mean, like, they're going to have one meat, they're going to have one fish. And very often, the meat of the day is pork, and the meat and the fish of the day is catfish. So, so my, some of my students who, if they, for example, eat neither pork nor catfish, you know, that makes them feel like I don't belong here because this, this dining hall menu was not built with me in mind. So my role is just to listen to, I don't fit in at the dining hall. I'm like, okay, can we get down to, can we choose a different fish to pair with the pork days so that my Jewish students or Muslim students or other students who don't eat pork can eat the fish that accompanies the pork. I mean, people really do want to make Rhodes College feel like home to all students. Um, my job is mostly just communicating uh, to help them do that. Uh, this is, a, I put a picture up of, um, it's called a Sukkot. Uh, we put one up every year during the Jewish holiday. Of, it's called a Sukkah, and we put it up for the Jewish holiday called Sukkot. Um, and they're really proud of it. The, the roof is a little lopsided. Uh, but the students are always really proud of putting it up. So making sure that there's like nice signage so that people start to build some religious literacy so that they don't say, oh, what's this weird tent? Why are these weird branches all over? Um, and this year it coincided with homecoming. So my Jewish students were able to say like, like, you know, family, cousins, mom, dad, come on down, see the sukkah that I built myself, that I got on the ladder while the chaplain, you know, turned away and put these branches over the top. Um, but homecoming is also like, we want the school to look really nice. You know, everything kind of has to be perfect. So making sure that the homecoming people understand, like, we're going to be doing this weird religious tradition thing. Students might be sleeping under the tent at night. Students are going to be eating under the tent at night. Mostly communicating and listening to the students and seeing what they need um, so that I can try to make this place feel like home. So whoever is the most marginalized, you know, I don't have that many Jewish students, but I want to put them at the center. I don't have that many religious minority students, but I'm going to try my best to put them at the center because that's what I think is my Christian calling to do. Um, not all Christians are called to the decentering Christianity work. Um, it might not be the calling in every context, but I do see the Magnificat as a calling for all Christians or all people who follow Christ to bring down the powerful from their thrones and lift up the lowly, fill the hungry with good things, and send the rich away empty. I think Christians are called, or followers of Christ are called to decenter whoever has the power in the situation, if that power is being used to um, push down and dominate, and that power is being used to push down and dominate. Um, and that's, that's good work, and that's belonging work. We're doing that work of belonging, of saying, you belong here even if um, you're not in the majority or the person with power in the room. So I put out this um, graphic by Ben Wildflower Art. Uh, you may have seen it because I think Adam and I own like three or four of this artist t-shirts between the two of us. Um, and it, it looks pretty radical. We got Mary with her fist in the air. She's crushing a skull under her foot. Um, but truly that I mean, that all, all that imagery is found in, in the Bible. And then we've got the words, fill the hungry, lift the lowly, cast down the mighty, send the rich away. And, you know, sometimes we get looks when we wear this t-shirt, but it's all from the Bible. I just read it for you. That's the Magnificat. And um, it's good news. It's good news for us. Christians are called to decenter whoever has power. And it's belonging work. Because decentering de the dominant power structure is good news, even for those of us who are white, moneyed, and education educated. It's good news because the dominant system, which is racialized capitalism, it will always feeling leave you feeling like you are defective in some way. So the dominant system says, oh, that's your body. You could be thinner. The dominant system says, that's your paycheck. It could be bigger. That's your house. It could be fancier. That's your IQ. You could be smarter. And it never ends. It never ends. 
Trying to belong in a framework that depends on you feeling like you do not belong, like there's something wrong with you, so that you will buy more or care less about the exploitation that's happening so that you can buy more. It does not work, it's unsustainable. The dominant system is unsustainable to try and have what is considered the perfect life. So what are we to do? Ask Mary. Bring down the powerful from their thrones and lift up the lowly. Build up belonging wherever you go by centering those at the margins. Because Jesus loves you just as you are. Because Jesus loves you at every size you have ever been or will ever be. Because Jesus loves you when you're broke or when you're rich. Jesus loves you whether you wound up in a mansion, an apartment, a shop, or a house. Jesus loves you when you make stupid decisions and when you show wisdom. Jesus loves my religious minority students, and I believe that Jesus wants them to feel at home at Rhodes College so that they can do what is a Presbyterian value, which is get your education and go out into the world and use your blessing to be a blessing to others, to make the world a better place, to heal the world. Jesus says that you belong just as you are, and that's good news. Amen. Yeah. That's um, who I refer to, including Miley, and um, a black screen toward the end. Thank you very much. So uh, we'll join in our practice of silence. Alone together. Uh, with Jim here, I will invite everyone to hook into their breath. How would they feel comfortable? I would like to say that uh, I have a sense of belonging here at Evergreen, very appreciative of that, and maybe we can uh, think about that during silence. Uh, Jim will play a tone for us to start and bring us out, I hope. Giving is not a casual act. It relates God's work to our work. Let us give as people whose work is inextricably linked to God's great works of creation, redemption, and empowerment. We go to God with our offerings.
the things that um, a lot of colleagues will first notice when they walk into this space, um, af usually after the Yvonne Bobo statue, um, is that we worship in the round, which uh, is a phrase for saying that um, it's not a lot of pews that all look in one central direction, but that you uh, get to look at each other, or sometimes uh, some of our neighbors and passerbys who don't know that they're being watched as they go by our windows, but that the table is literally in the center of our space. Um, most Presby not all, but most Presbyterian sanctuaries have the table in the middle up front, but we went a step further of saying it's in, literally in the middle of our gathering. So as Pastor Beatrix talked about the, the many ways that she works for and, and embodies belonging at Rhodes, this is a way that we can celebrate belonging here in our space, is that the communion table is literally at the center of our worshiping life. This is a table that um, stretches throughout time, back in time to our ancestors. People have come before us, all those imperfect saints who gave us language in the creeds and in the hymns and in the prayers. This is a table that stretches forward in time to those who will come after us, our children and grandchildren and those little ones that we get to listen to and, and hold as they grow up. This is a table that stretches all the way around the world. It's a table that is available uh, to those who are um, struggling and to those who are full of joy and fulfillment. This is a table that is uh, for those who are comfortable and for those who are in um, war-torn areas and just need a bite to eat. This is a table for all. I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, your spirit has been with us and been with creation from the beginning. As Pastor Beatrix said, you hovered over the chaos, you hovered over the waters, you created this world good and you created us humanity very good. And we often messed up, but you still stayed faithful to us. You loved us. You called us back to righteousness. You called us to lives of justice and compassion. You would find ways to speak with us, to send prophets and judges. And even when we couldn't quite get it right, you came to us in the person of Jesus. And you showed us what it meant to sit at a table and break bread together, to look into the eyes of of folks from every background and to let them know that they are loved and that they are worth more than the worst thing they've ever done. We pray that you offer us that same hospitality now as we come here, not with the pressure of hosting, but with the enjoyment of being guests. We come to this table knowing that in the bread and in the cup, your presence is here. The mystery of your love is present with us. So do what you always do. Take this ordinary stuff, the bread and the grapes and the juice, and turn it into something extraordinary. In many names we pray. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he was with his friends. While they were eating, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, take this and eat of it. This is my body broken for you. And whenever you Eat it. Remember me. So then he took the cup and he said, this cup is my blood. It is the cup of the new covenant shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. So that is what we do. This is a sacred act of remembrance. This is a holy reminder that we do over and over again in case we forget. It's a reminder of God's love and God's grace. And a reminder that we do not do this alone, because we serve each other, this meal. What we have started doing here at Evergreen is um, doing intinction, which is the, uh, the old rip and dip. Uh, so I will hold the bread and the cup, and you can tear a piece, and there's plenty, so get you a good chunk, dip it in uh, the juice and then uh, return to your, to your seat. If, you, if that's not your thing, um, I totally understand for whatever reason. There are these cups that'll be off to the side. Uh, you can take a cup and there's a grape instead of the juice and a piece of bread that you can have in that. And then um, 
Just hold on to the, it's a glass cup. Um, don't throw it away, just hold on to it. And uh, these um, little holders will come around to collect the empty ones. Are there uh, two elders that'd be willing to hold uh, these? Which side? It's cat. <laughs> Well, if you did, I failed to write it down, so I'm sorry. Um, and then if you uh, don't, um, if, if you're not able to come forward, uh, we can bring it to you. Um, and of course, as Pastor Beatrix has taught us, uh, if you are not able to um, take communion uh, orally, you can uh, have it ocularly. There's a way to celebrate it there. Friends, uh, these, this is the table of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. So come forward as you see fit. And I, I must also say that the bread is vegan and gluten-free, all of it. to wish to be served. Holy God, for this moment, for this meal, and for these people, we give you thanks. And God, for all those folks who have asked that I find smaller grapes, I pray for forgiveness. <laughs> I really tried. Oh, man. for all of us to hear one another's uh, joys and concerns, um, the sorrows, the things that are weighing on our hearts. So um, if you're here in this space, uh, as a, after I open the prayer, you're invited to say your prayers out loud. 
If you're joining us on Zoom, you're invited to type your prayers into the chat and Pastor Beatrix will read them. I'll repeat a summary into the microphone for all of us to hear and to hold, and then I will say, oh God, and you're invited to respond. Hear our prayers. Let's pray. Gracious God, on such a busy weekend for this evergreen family, we give you thanks. We give you thanks that we know that you are with us even when we're feeling low or running from one thing to another, or when we're just having so much fun and dancing and hitting beach balls around that we're not noticing it. You are rejoicing with us. Oh God, Hear our prayers. We have a friend named Daniel Allen. His brother has leukemia and it's not doing well. He's got three boys, young, young boys. For Roger's friend uh, Daniel, there's a brother with uh, leukemia who's not doing well and has uh, three boys. So God, yeah. hear our prayers. Susan. For caregivers. For caregivers. Oh God. Jan is going to have to take the place on the Yes, and the all bone is nice to remove it. And the dog would be overall. <laughs> From Catherine, uh, for Jan, her procedure this week, and from Jan, that the, the old bone is nice to the new one. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 to make pride happen, um, and especially two folks who embodied it incredibly well, uh, Betty and Catherine. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Margaret. To all college students who don't feel welcome, help us to welcome those who feel marginalized, can't hear all graduating seniors from high school who are entering college, mm -hmm. they will find a place that they respect in college. For Mary Margaret, for all uh, college students, especially those graduating now and going off to college, they might find a place of belonging. Oh God, yes. they're on purpose. CK. Um, for our friends, and Catherine, who we pray for, um, pregnancy in this room before when it was a little touch and go in the beginning. Baby Wells was born on the 31st. Very healthy. Yeah. Had to be born early because he's big. <laughs> uh, so they're doing really well. Um, so prayers for their family and especially Emmy who now is not the only child. Um, and uh, prayers that my friend Koki, who we worked restaurant work together um, in Atlanta, so trauma bond. <laughs> um, she's here visiting, um, so just prayers of gratitude that you made it on your road trip. Um, and then prayers for Amy, because a new friend is also visiting. Um, lots of joy. Ms. K, uh, prayers of gratitude for, for our friends Nick and Catherine. Um, 
and uh, who have been here before, maybe you've gotten a chance to meet them. Uh, they welcomed their second child, baby Wells, uh, recently. Oh God, uh, yeah. Yeah. prayers. And for a trauma-bonded friendship, um, <laughs> Koki and C uh, CK getting to reunite in Koki's travels um, and bringing her friend Amy and Dress getting to know her as well. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of uh, prayers myself. Um, I have been in a, in a course um, called Drum Major for Justice, specifically working on um, uh, anti-black uh, racism and how to be a better ally, especially in faith communities. That wrapped up on Friday. Uh, our graduation ceremony with our final project presentation is this afternoon. Um, so prayers of gratitude for all the instructors and the classmates and all I've got to do with that class. That has been really powerful and a good course for me, a great way to reconnect with people I care about. Um, and also prayers, um, I ask for prayers that I can be a better ally um, in all the way. I have all the privilege cards uh, as a white, cis, straight dude in America with an American passport. Um, I have all the privilege cards to be the better, best ally I can be. Oh God, hear our prayers. Okay. Uh, I just think that pride was equal and joyful, and you know, um, using that right now for myself and metaphor or. Sometimes you miss when things are good and you miss when things are right in the sense that it helps to encourage you for the next step. And so, prayers for myself that I focus better on that, that I need that encouragement to then move forward the next day. Things are not always as hard, um, you know, when they're hard, there's always something to encourage. And I feel like, you know, when you Tune out the noise from the outside, touch grass, put the phone down, you go to pride. There's so much joy right here. Um, doesn't eliminate the bad, doesn't eliminate the scary, and that's not my intent. But for anyone else who needs daily reminders that there's a lot to fight for that's already there, um, that was a really good intro. Cat personal prayer uh, for uh, that holy reminder of pride that there's a lot going right, um, and that that may sustain her, and that wisdom sustain us when things are tough. That there are there are things we're fighting for. Oh God, yeah. hear our prayers. It's Jay and Brian. Graham, Jay, and Brian. Oh God. Yeah. 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 My two Presbyterian churches first, and then three. Your support during the pride parade and first congregation on who I have ties with is also part of the pride parade. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm proud to know all these people from three churches that are important to me. Mm -hmm. We're a part of that display of gratitude and for affirmation. For Mary Margaret, um, prayers of gratitude for uh, her two church homes, First Pres and Evergreen, as well as First Congregational, her ties there in the presence of pride. And may our hearts be softened, even with the news of First Congo winning the uh, prize, as Latifa said, for best, best uh, walking, may we be able to forgive them and <laughs> seek reconciliation. Yeah, forget. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, hear our prayers. prayers. We pray for Catherine as uh, she uh, is traveling to be with her parents uh, this weekend, and gratitude for Jim being in our space and leading music this uh, this day. Oh God, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Thinking back on Mary Mar Margaret, and I am grateful, particularly as a born and bred Wesleyan, he said it in Presbyterian Church, <laughs> that our Methodist siblings got rid of the incompatible language, which meant that they finally felt free to celebrate pride and be at pride without liturgical and ecclesiastical consequences. And I'm thinking particularly my friend Tom, who's 
pastor of Memphis First United Methodist Church, who um, was at Pride uh, representing his church, and I got to sit with him for a long time. Um, uh, my heart was strangely warmed. Um, I was glad to see that. So, Jim, uh, for uh, our Methodist siblings, um, who finally get to, uh, I'm not going to put it as politically as Jim did, but finally got to uh, celebrate Pride without the uh, without some of the red tape of the denomination, and especially for his friend Tom, and for all those who worked uh, to make that so. Oh God, you're on first. All right, y'all, I'm running out of bullets in space here. Go ahead. <laughs> One last one, my sister Julia, who has been the director of mission at First Congregational for mm -hmm. I don't know how many years now, is retiring. She has had a, a wonderful impact. Um, I'm grateful for her and her wife, Kathy. For Mary Margaret, her sister Julia, who is retiring from good and important work for her and for her wife, Catherine. Oh God, yeah. in our prayers. I'm sorry for my comment. If you have more prayers, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I do. I just care. Just a prayer of gratitude for um, Beatrice's words and her work at Rhodes. Um, yeah, I'm inspired to like look at even what my power is that should be passed down to recenter somebody else. So mm -hmm. prayers that we can all look at our own um, and do work like Beatrice in our space. From CK, gratitude for Beatrix and her, her work and her wisdom and her sharing uh, sharing that with us this morning, uh, in spite of the obstacle that is a projector. And us all discerning the ways that we can uh, de uh, decenter ourselves. Oh God. Yeah. 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 God, we trust that you hear all prayers, those that we say out loud and those that are uh, don't yet have the words, don't yet have the words to say them, or for those that are just too hard to say. And we seal all of these prayers uh, with this prayer that you taught us to pray that's printed in our bulletin or using the words closest to our own hearts as we pray together. Our maker, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our closing hymn is found at the very bottom of your bulletin, God of Many Faces. <laughs>
go forth in peace and remember that Jesus loves you. Amen. Amen.